So imagine billions of dollars frozen in time, a financial war chest seized from a global power. Now, picture those funds flowing into a war-torn nation's recovery. This isn't fiction, it's the reality of EU's bold move with Russia's seized assets, as the EU is donating Russian seized assets to help Ukraine. The global economy and geopolitics is an intricate web, but how does the European Union's decision to redirect Russian profits to support Ukraine affect you? Keep watching and we'll explain everything. So to understand the gravity of the situation, we have to rewind. Since Russia attacked Ukraine, the EU has seized and frozen $300 billion of Russian assets. Now, during the two or so years that Russia has been in the war with Ukraine, those assets, while frozen, have been earning interest. They've earned about $3.5 billion. And what EU is planning to do is that they're planning to take those interest earnings and to give it to Ukraine to fund their war. So while doing my research, I discovered that one main point of why Russia attacked Ukraine was because Ukraine was openly stating their desire to join NATO. And Russia and Ukraine's history goes back a thousand years. So during the last century, Ukraine was known as the breadbasket of Europe. They were a prosperous and powerful republic that came from the former USSR. For Ukraine, the path to independence in 1991 was chaotic. It was marked by protests and government corruption. Now, NATO has always been a thorn to Russia, and with Ukraine publicly voicing that they wish to join NATO, this literally triggered Russia and Putin. Because NATO was founded partly to deter Soviet expansion. And with NATO including Ukraine, that would mean that NATO is expanding to the borders of Russia, which threatens their national security. So to run this point home, we can use an analogy. So let's take a look at the whiteboard. So here we have my dad. My dad here runs an oil delivery business and I have learned the business from my dad. So learn. So my dad has a bunch of clients that are gas stations that he delivers gas to. So let's say Shell, Chevron, he delivers gas. And here, my dad is Russia, whereas the son, me, this little fatty, is Ukraine. So what happened is that now we had a disagreement. So both him and I, we are not talking. And because of this disagreement, because it is public, his clients knows about it. They know about it. So what they're doing is that they don't agree with my dad they actually sided with me. So what they're doing is the money that they owe my dad, they're actually redirecting that to me as a form of punishment, punishment for my dad. So that is what's happening. And that's how we are affected. Prices and inflation are rising, I'm sure you've noticed. And for Americans and Europeans, we're all facing higher prices especially gas. Savings are at an all-time low and debts are at an all-time high. So naturally that makes you think, why is the EU using Russian profits in order to help Ukraine? The one reason is that Europe cannot print their own money like the United States. Well, when we know that answer, why don't we ask the question, why doesn't US just print the money to help Ukraine? Well, the answer to that is that printing money is an uh, invisible tax. It will raise inflation and they cannot raise inflation right now because Americans are already suffering. And on top of that, it is election year. Not to mention that America has already footed a big part of the bill. So what they ended up resorting to is they resorted to taking the interest that was earned on the Russian seized asset, 3.5 billion, and they're going to take that and give it to Ukraine to support their military war efforts. So so here's where I think it all leads to. Russia has oil, and I believe that oil and resource is what is keeping them afloat. 
And for North America and Europe, what they need is oil. And you might ask, can't EU and North America get oil from other countries? Well, yes and no, because the other countries are OPEC. And they say that their members control around 80% of the world's oil. And here's the catch me. They do not like US and their allies. And I see it as they will more readily support Russia than actually cater to the US. How I see it is I see that oil will be supplied by Canada, US, and Norway. And that is where most of the oil will come from. But guys, we are on shortage. So currently, the US cannot even support their own oil consumption. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve has never been lower. Right now, we have around 360 million barrels, and it hasn't been at this level since 1983 before I was born. To me, it is checkmate for the EU. This is their last ditch effort to support Ukraine by redirecting $3.5 billion of interest that has been earned by the Russian seized assets to the Ukraine war fund. And guys, $3.5 billion is a drop in the ocean. It's not even a lot. So Russia was like a myth. And the thing about my dad is he will never do business with a client that has betrayed him unless he has complete total control over them. What that means to me is that Western nations will have to look elsewhere for oil delivery. And the chances are wherever they go, the price is gonna be much higher and they're gonna have to pass that higher price down to the consumer and then the consumer will have to decide whether to pump gas in their car or feed their children. So here's the final catch though. Remember when Russia was like meh when Europe took their money and redirected it back to the Ukraine war fund? I think that they completely expected this. Russia and China right now are all buddy buddy and what the West does not want for China is they do not want China to attack Taiwan. But the fact is the West is broke and EU's decision to use Russian interest payments shows that. And that made me think maybe this is the prelude to an even bigger war that is going to start soon. With that said, if you want to know about the top three assets that you must have before the US enters civil war, you might want to check out the video that I made last week right here.